Hello and welcome to a quick little news summary for Star Citizen for the week ending the 20th of February 2022. There's loads of events, there's some statements from Cloud Imperium, there's some worries about development times, there's lots. To start with, from the newsletter from Cloud Imperium this week, from now through February 25th, Star Citizen is completely free to download and play. Throughout the Free Fly event, you can explore the vast universe in five iconic ships, each offering a different experience among the stars. It's also the ideal time to share your adventures with friends, so spread the word. So we're in the middle of a host of events at the moment, so that Free Fly enables anyone to try Star Citizen for free. And there's also a little recruitment program, so if you recruit anyone um, during that period, you uh, both get um, a set of armor and a gun if they purchase at least $40 worth of stuff until um, February 28th. I think that runs too. Uh, but you can try out the Aurora MR, 100i, the Nomad, the Prospect, and the Cutlass Black. There's also the Nine Tails Lockdown and Jump Town events um, that players can get involved with as well, and a combat ship sail on two. I will link my video all about those and the schedule for them down below. Inside Star Citizen this week looked at updates to characters and NPCs' faces and customizations that we're going to see in the near future. So we are going to see more variants and additional details to characters and their faces, better eyes, eyelashes, eyebrows, all that sort of jazz in Alpha 3.17 it seems. Later, we're going to get new hairstyles too. The nav mesh was also discussed, which enables NPCs to move around the surface of a planet. We may see some of this and missions that make use of it as early as Alpha 3.18, but the nav mesh having NPCs be able to move between areas is fantastically important for Star Citizen. Having them follow you, having them reinforce areas, fantastic stuff. Star Citizen Live had the props team building a trolley needed for Pyro. This sort of um, all came together with the creation of a uh, rough um, player usable trolley. Um, nothing really game breaking or shaking there, uh, but a nice little um, sort of a look at development nonetheless. The sneak peek this week is of the exterior door of the Hull A. The ship should be coming in Alpha 3.17 and is the first ship to have the morphing cargo physics grid, which is a big deal because obviously they need it for the Hull C and the rest of the Hull series and yeah, an important part of Star Citizen, uh, at least from the tech front. Some Xenothreat 3.0 stats are apparently going to be released by Clan Imperium soon, probably next week. I saw um, Pipeline which were previously Star Citizen leaks, talking about some internal changes potentially at CIG. Um, but as with all these sort of leaks and rumours, take them with a huge heap of salt. I'll roughly summarise what they said. Um, basically, there's a huge amount of the devs now working on Squadron 42. So it is the largest amount of devs working percentage-wise on Squadron 42 um, that they ever have had compared to the PU. So effectively, relatively, there's less devs working on the PTU. So bear that in mind. This potentially sees Montreal Studio there, the uh, turbulent-headed studio, doing a huge amount of the in-game content, according to Pipeline. So this may cause prioritization issues when it comes to persistent universe features, potentially. Um, they're sort of worried about Pyro, but they didn't really have any sort of solid details on that. So um, we do know that Pyro isn't planned to have Ruin Station in its first release, um, but basically Pipeline then said the larger concern is that Cloud Imperium are effectively having problems hiring people at the rate that they want them. They want a lo lot more people coming to their new offices. They want to be hiring loads and loads and loads of new devs, but obviously they're as they're hiring them, they're also um, going through some staff turnover. And at the moment in the industry, at the sort of times we are in, um, it's not great to hire people. A lot of people um, wanting to be working from home, whereas Cloud Imperium want people to work in the office and things like that. So um, although that isn't a doom and gloom sort of thing, it's a reality of um, the sort of days we're in now. And they may need to offer more money to attract more staff. Uh, but again, that was just sort of rumours and speculation and uh, leaks uh, as they were, so take them as you want. I do think hiring uh, such a large amount of staff that Clan Imperium do want to expand it to, because they want hundreds more staff uh, just in their UK studios, um, so uh, that's, that's a big undertaking. But uh, anyway, a few people have messaged me asking me to talk about CCUs, sort of cross-chassis upgrades, ship upgrades, and buybacks in regards to the new upgrade prices may change statement from Cloud Imperium. So for those of you that don't know, you can melt ships and packages that are on your account that you've bought with real money and basically converting them into store credit. But you can buy a lot of these back at a later 
date with store credit, though you can only do that once a quarter, or with real money pretty much at any time. I think previously you could buy ship upgrades uh, that you'd previously melted back at the price you'd melted them at, but that is no longer the case, Cloud and Pyram have said. As with everything else, when a ship upgrade is reclaimed, it is intended to be permanent. The buyback system allows you to buy back a pledge or upgrade you regret reclaiming. However, the price of an upgrade may change, potentially costing more when bought back. All buyback upgrades will be presented with the latest prices, not the price you paid when first buying. In the rare case that one of the ships associated with the upgrade has increased in price above the upgrade target's value, attempting to buy back the ship will result in an error. So um, you can't recover those ones. Uh, certain pledges cannot be bought back as well. Uh, be careful when making selections. So um, the sort of discounted combo packages, promo packages like the MD upgrade, uh, and I believe the... Uh, uh, whatever it was called, the Sabre Raven, that's the one. Uh, pledges and packages with physical items attached to them, Squadron 42 add-on and Star Citizen add-on pledges, um, upgrade CCUs where the ship values have drastically changed. Once these pledges have been reclaimed, they are permanently unavailable. I mean, I think this might upset some people that were really sort of microing their fleet and um, wanted loads of upgrade options for the future. They, they sold um, some CCUs going, oh, I'll buy them every time a CCU is available because then in the future I can choose and I don't really have to think. So yeah, I can imagine some people are annoyed. They're like, well, I, I thought I had, I bought them then so that in the future I could change over to, the, to this if I wanted. And I didn't really realize that I wouldn't have the time afforded to do that now. So yeah, there's, some people are going to be annoyed. It does make sense for Cloud Imperium to do this. Uh, they don't want people to hoard a load of CCUs and buy them back when ships change in value, so you can potentially jump and CC your way up to a very cheap Polaris or expensive ship, or um, they don't want to support the sort of Star Citizen Grey market in doing that either, I suppose. So they do want to reward early adopters, uh, but they don't want people to just have their cake and eat it constantly. That said, it's not something that massively affects me, so I don't care about it so much, uh, but I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on that in the comments below. I mean, some people might be hugely affected by it, some people might think it's incredibly unfair, some people might just not care at all, some people might go, actually, that sort of makes sense. Boom. That's it for your Star Citizen news this week. I hope you enjoyed it, but I'd love to know, are you trying Star Citizen for the first time in the free fly? Um, what do you think of Alpha 3.16 as it is now? Are you looking forward to Alpha 3.17 coming hopefully at the end of March? Uh, were you affected or annoyed by the um, ship upgrade changes? Do you think we're in for a slow year for Star Citizen's persistent universe as they try to power through Squadron 42 and focus on that? Could we see Pyro by the end of the year? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Mummy, my friend told me at school today that that Star Citizen was a scam. Oh, Tim, is that why you got into a fight? Yes, Mummy. The only scam is people stealing all your internet infos and blocking your ability to watch things on Netflix and such with regional-based access. That's why we use our words, Tim. You should have told those bullies to get NordVPN and also that Star Citizen is the best damn space sim ever. <laughs> yes, these two people are right. Get NordVPN and also Star Citizen's great. Also, Timmy was a 35-year-old teacher at the school and it wasn't even a school, it was a pub and he was a barman. Every month we have a ship giveaway and for February 2022, it's for an Aegis Sabre, the high-tech medium fighter with loads of firepower, but it comes in an auspicious red paint scheme as part of the Red Festival, as well as lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is comment on any of my videos made during the month. You can further support the channel by clicking the join button underneath any of my videos. You can also donate or become a Patreon. Your feedback, though, from comments really helps the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you're looking for a diegetic little controlly boy um, that makes your Star Citizen experience and potentially some other games pretty good fun on your touchscreen devices, then check out Game Glass. You've got that, you've got NordVPN links, you've got loads of other stuff. All in the links below. Click them all. Click them all. Maybe not all of them. That would be madness.